folks, Pixel Pedden here again to talk TI-99 tech, and in particular today, TI-99 hardware. Because it's been a pretty good year for TI hardware, it seems to me, and a good year for the PEB especially. Which is to say, the Peripheral Expansion Box, the original endgame solution for expanding your TI-99 and adding all the bells and whistles. On its own, it has seven free expansion slots for whatever cards you want to add. With the four first-party cards TI brought to market in the system's heyday, still being the ones most often seen in a modern PEB. Those being the 32K memory expansion, the disc controller, the RS-232 card, and to a lesser extent, the UCSD Pascal card. So, it's only natural the P-Box is where we've tended to put a lot of our third-party expansion hardware, too. And why not? When the PEB still has plenty of space to spare, even when all four of TI's first-party add-ons are installed. After all of the essentials, which I'd say are the RS-232 card for printer and modem support, the disk controller for floppy, and the 32K for expansion memory, well, you've still got four slots for whatever you please. And yet, none of this was the original plan for TI-99 expansion. The PEB didn't even exist during the TI-99-4 era, from 1979 through to 81. During that era, a sidecar plugged into the side of your console, rather than a PEB card plugged into the expansion box, was TI's idea for expanding the system. So, it's not an idle question, asking which of these two ways of expanding the TI-99, one, makes more sense as the modern expansion standard, and two, passes the TI purity test best as the original and right way to expand your TI-99. Since, well, both of them had their day in that role. First, the sidecar approach, and then the pep guard. And while the sidecar ended up losing out, and the PEB ended up as the standard back in the day, I think it's worth asking, is the PEB still popular in the 2020s? Or is it possible that there just aren't enough PEBs and PEB users out there to call it a standard anymore? To help answer that question, I did a poll a while back on Atari Age. And the answer from 70 users there was that most people on that forum still do use the PEB on the regular with only 23% saying they don't own a PEB at all. And likewise, Arcade Chopper did a poll of the biggest TI-99 Facebook group, with about the same number of people responding there. And the results were similar, with the majority there being active PEB users today. So, for both better and worse, it seems like the PEB still rules the TI-99 expansion world. And the sidecar hasn't won out just yet. Though sidecars have certainly gained ground in the last decade, with modern add-ons like the CF7 Plus and the Nano Peb, and the Jedi Mat 32K memory expansion and the Tippy, showing off how much you can do without a Peb. Still, the Peb delivers one thing those solutions mostly don't really which is a standard expansion format you can mix and match in large numbers any way you please, with as many as seven cards in use at once in a PEB. Now, TI's own original sidecars could be set up in one big conga line of devices, with each one plugging into the previous one till every expansion need was fulfilled. But the limitations of that approach should be pretty obvious in that it eats up a lot of desk space extremely fast. And as a downtown condo dweller, I am covetous of my desk space. So a shared case for expansion boards is just a better way to go for me than a big line of sidecars reaching off to the end of the earth, each of which needs its own power and its own case. And evidently, that's not just me. Because like I say, the PEB did mostly replace sidecars, and it seems like it's still the dominant solution in the community today, leaving behind just one very important reminder of the sidecar concept that nearly every 99er came to see as a core component to the system, that being the speech synthesizer. 
If you wanted all the main expansion features of the TI-99, even if you had a PEB and all TI's first party cards to boot, you still needed that one sidecar. Though nobody had any trouble getting them since, well, TI kept on cranking them out like crazy and software kept on putting them to good use. With most popular TI-99 games using speech, Press any key to go on. And the all-important Extended Basic and Terminal Emulator 2 cartridges supporting it natively. Speech Synth and Text-to-Speech were two of the coolest features to play with on a TI-99. Whether you were just starting out using Call Say and Extended Basic, I am a TI-99. Or you were trying to do something more interesting, using the Text-to-Speech disc or LPC editing tools, for example. Are you going to Starbucks? Are you Mary and time? Remember me to one who lives there. She once was a true love of mine. So it's a good thing the speech sidecar stuck around for the long haul. Even if it might have been nice to have a peb card to do the job so we could. Ditch the last sidecar, taking up space there on the right side of the TI-99. I shouldn't go putting too much blame on sidecars when it comes to taking up TI-99 desk space, though, since one of the bigger things taking up space in most TI setups is the massive side port connection to the PEB itself. Yes, the connector the PEB uses to connect to the TI-99 console is a bit of a monster. So anyone hoping to completely escape sidecar chaos by going with a PEB might be disappointed to find that huge connector and heavy cable still hanging out there, even once everything else has been moved inside the PEB. As a whole, we tend to call that PEB connection the fire hose, <laughs> because it's just that big and heavy and hard to handle. Though, in defense of the fire hose, I will say, it stood the test of time pretty darn well. Most fire hose cables are still doing their job just fine 40 years later. But use it enough and you're absolutely going to run into situations where something more flexible and space economic would be appreciated. Because a big flat cable like this, well, it can only be arranged in a few different ways. And if those don't work for you, well, too bad for you. Another issue created by the size of the connector being you really do want a supporting surface right underneath that connector, so you're not putting the whole weight of it on the edge connector itself. And that rules out most setups where the system isn't sitting right on a desk. And yeah, this sort of vertical setup is maybe not the most practical regardless, but it sure does look nice. And more to the point for me, I tend to have a lot of my hardware on 19-inch racks. Which means not being able to stack the console and PEB vertically is just about the most annoying thing to me when it comes to arranging my hardware. So, the PEB has a few things going for it, and a few things going against it too. But as far as the downsides go, there are solutions, and two new hardware products this year are top of the list among those. Which is how they end up as the main inspiration for this video. The first of those being an answer to the question, why do I still have this speech modulator sidecar hanging around if I've got a PEB for my expansion needs? And it may be that one reasonable answer there is simply, because it looks so gosh darn good. Since that synth module really does look great next to the black and silver TI-99, and the way its case opens up to allow space for a non-existent speak and spell style expansion module in a non-existent socket, glorious. But probably style points aren't good enough reason to take up valuable space on your desk. Certainly isn't good enough reason to take up space on mine. Which is why a speech card for the PEB is something we've seen before, and something we're seeing again now, with the Shift 838 speech board from Chris Schneider. This board isn't actually a replacement for the speech synthesizer sidecar, though. Instead, it's an adapter that lets you take the board from your synthesizer so as to connect it to a PEB card provided to generate speech, allowing the same hardware you're already using to do what it needs to do, even from inside the PEB. 
So there's some assembly required, but not much really. Just unscrew the case screws on your TI speech synthesizer sidecar to get inside of there. Then liberate the board from its housing. And with that done, plug it into the Shift 838 speech board and you're good to go. With that plugged into your PEB, you've got a talking TI with no synthesizer anywhere to be seen. With nothing but the PEB's fire hose cable plugged into the side of your TI-99. Which is still a lot of connector taking up space there next to your TI. But at least now, all of your expansion tools are in one expansion toolbox. Clearly though, what we ought to be looking for next to make this PEB situation even better is a replacement for that massive connector cable. And happily, that's something we do have now, via the Shift 838 Flex Cable replacement just recently released. The issues with the original solution for connecting your TI-99 to your PEB aren't just with the connector. Like I said earlier, that huge flat cable adds to the bulk for its own part with the fire hose doing plenty to limit your options for setting up your system and positioning your PEB. So with all that in mind, what I'd like to have first of all is a smaller connector than the big honking one on TI's fire hose. But after that, I'd also like more flexibility as far as cable length goes. And finally, I'd like it to be round instead of flat, for a bit more space economy. Well, the good news is, that's what the 838IO package from Chris Schneider provided this year. The first part of which is a new interface board to install in your PEB, which features a D-sub connector instead of the permanent fixed-length fire hose of TI's interface card, which means you can use a cable you buy with the card, or otherwise supply your own if you're up to it. In my case, that cabling solution is a nice long 5-foot cable, which is not just longer than the original PEB cable, Thanks to ditching the flat format, I can orient it a lot more freely without worrying about figuring out a sequence of turns that gets the cable where I need it to be. So that makes the PEB way easier to use for me. But not just because the cable's longer and easier to position. Maybe even more so, because we've eliminated the part of the classic PEB connection I complained about the most here. Namely, the giant side port connector which adds a whole lot of unnecessary bulk to any TI-99 setup. There, the 838IO package replaces the side port connector with a little sidecar board, with the PEB connector for the PEB facing backwards rather than sideways, so I can run it out back of my setup and out of the way, which is where it ought to be most of the time. Plus, the sidecar board has a socket for a 32K expansion board, so that if you want to save an expansion slot in your PEB for other stuff, you can install your 32K here instead. And optionally, all of that can be chucked into a 3D printed case like you see here to keep it safe. So combine all that and you've got all the expansion space you could really need for a TI-99 it seems to me, with nothing but a little sidecar adding to the bulk of your console itself. With the width of that sidecar just changing a little bit depending on whether you add on the 32K or not. But one reason you might not want the 32K at this point in history is another piece of hardware for any modern TI-99 PEB, the SAMS memory expansion, which gives you a full meg of expansion memory inside your PEB. Do you actually need that much bank switched memory in your PEB? Interesting question, honestly, because, well, on the one hand, virtually no classic TI-99 software at all uses SAMS. Lots of software uses the 32K, but with SAMS only really catching on in the last few years, there's still not that much that uses that extra RAM. Though what there is is pretty darn impressive, as you'll see here in the case of the Dungeons of Asgard demo. So, maybe that's enough. The community does seem to be embracing SAMS lately as the new standard for the system. So, the idea it'll be the standard memory expansion for your PEB, expected for the best of the best in TI software, seems pretty credible. Plus, we've now got Realms of Antiquity, as the killer app for SAMS on the TI-99. So, that alone makes a pretty strong case for putting SAMS in your PEB, as I've now put a SAMS board in mine. 
Though, caveat emptor, if you're going the real iron route with Realms of Antiquity, you'll need more than just SAMs, given the game needs disks bigger than TI's single-density controller supports. So, while Realms of Antiquity is the killer app for SAMs, it doesn't sell SAMs on its own. TI Single Density Floppy Controller with its 90k disks was always a pretty brutal limitation. So it's no surprise developers now want to develop for something better. Which means, the question is, what's that something better you can put in your PEB today that'll give you a bigger, better, more flexible storage than a 90k floppy? Well, it's not your only option, but the Tippy is definitely a pretty great one right now. That being the Raspberry Pi based solution for adding drives of pretty much any size at all to your TI-99. It's available as a PEP card, and it's a pretty affordable way to put essentially limitless storage in your expansion box. Still, I kind of find myself pulled in two directions here. Because I'm partly going to the PEP specifically for the sake of legacy hardware and legacy format support, rather than just modern replacements that do away with the legacy stuff. So, while there's a SAMS in one of my PEBs, there actually isn't a Tippy to go along with it. And instead, the SAMS and Tippy sidecars are my solution for using a TI-99 without a PEB. Clearly, there's no one right answer as far as where original hardware should end and modern upgrades should begin. It really is up to your own judgment and preference. And some folks like me are also going to have multiple setups that do things pretty differently, as far as that goes. Where, for example, I've got one PEB with all the original TI cards and absolutely nothing else polluting its purity. And one PEB with mostly modern and third-party stuff. But if you want to really go all out finding modern replacements, clearly the next step is replacing the PEB power supply and main board with something that isn't over four decades old. And that just happens to be the next tech coming along the line right now with the 838 PEB, currently in the pre-order stage as I record this. If there's one part of the TI hardware that really emphatically just can't last forever, it's the power subsystems in both the console and the expansion box as well, with the TI-99 itself running notoriously hot, and then the PEB, of course, having its own AC connection and power supply to worry about. Meaning that looking for a replacement for all of that to keep these machines working a little longer sure does make sense. One upside of replacing your PEB hardware with a modern solution in this way being you can now use a modern case, too. And one downside being your modern case probably doesn't look as cool as the classic TI PEB case does. At least to my tastes. I just really like that classic silver and black TI look. And the PEB fully delivers it, where not many modern cases will. So I don't think I'll be replacing my PEB cases anytime soon. But there's going to come a time for all this hardware, after all, when caps dry up and components fail. So it's great to have options in this area. Until then, though, my pep fan is going to keep on roaring as loud as it ever did. Modern silent fans, who needs them? This here is the siren song of the TI-99. Anyway, this has been a look at where the PEB stands in the modern TI upgrade landscape and what's going on in PEB hardware in late 2022. With the 838 speech card and 838 I.O. board and cable and side port connector being the headliner so far this year. But with the Samsung Tippy PEB boards being hugely important options already on the market that I believe are going to remain popular for a long time to come. So my question to you is, do you have a PEB and have you bought any of these upgrades? Or on the other hand, do you look at what we can do with sidecars these days and say, well, I think that about covers it. Tell me about it. Thanks for watching, folks. See you soon. This is Pixel Pet and signing off.